butchered my agent. How many since? How many? Two hundred? Three? Four! <coughs> Stop that! All right, all right! Are you armed, Bill? I'm a Soviet diplomat. This behavior... Shut up! Peter, will you please telephone Percy Allerline and ask him and Roy Bland to come here immediately? Then Lacon, then Toby Esterhazy. I think the first thing to do is to play them this evening's tapes. That should save a great deal of time in explanations. And Yev Kluchini. Alex, really? Oh, they're on. Do you mind if I finish my drink, George? There was no one out there you noticed. Quiet as the grave. Very proper, George. Don't want anything irrelevant, do we? Very tidy, George. assures me there's been no coercion. I hope that's true. Oh, yes. No complaints, George. Bit of a nosebleed. Keep feeling dizzy. I'm sure it's just the excitement of it all. Why have you been weeping? Sheer exasperation. Really, the pettiness of our inquisitors. They're utterly incompetent. They actually believe I know the names of Carla's other moles around the world. Idiots. I can't talk to people like that. But you're prepared to say something to me, according to Lakeham. Can't Percy get a move on doing his horse trading with Carla? Oh, I'm sure it'll only be a matter of a day or two now. What do you want to know? Oh. Why? When? How? <laughs> you ask that? Because it was necessary! That's why. Someone had to. Bluffed. You, me, control, all of us. The circus talent spotters all those years ago, they picked us when we were golden with hope. Told us we were on our way to the Holy Grail. A lifetime of glory in front of us. Service to the great cause. Freedom's protectors. <laughs> God. <laughs> what a question. <laughs> Why? Do you know what's killing Western democracy, George? Greed and constipation. Moral, political, ascetic. I hate America very deeply. The economic repression of the masses, institutionalized. Even Lenin couldn't foresee the extent of that. Britain Oh, dear. No viability whatever in world affairs. I suppose that's when it began. Turning my eyes to the East, I mean. And I saw how trivial we'd become as a nation. Say, mid-40s. By 1950, I was slipping Carla occasional gifts of intelligence, carefully selected morsels to help the Russian cause against America. At that time, I was scrupulous not to give Moscow anything harmful to ourselves, our own agents in the field. I still believe the secret services are the only real expression of a nation's character. 
Until the mid-fifties, I still had hopes, lingering loyalty to what we represented. Self-delusion, of course. We were already America's streetwalkers. I was granted Soviet citizenship 12 years ago. They've given me a couple of medals. Yes, you're right. The Czechoslovakian business was a bit of a desperate throw. But something pretty bold was called for. I was certain control was getting very warm indeed. <laughs> All that burrowing in the files he was doing. It was paying off, I knew. He'd built up an uncomfortably impressive inventory of the number of operations I'd either blown or managed to cripple. And then, of course, he was narrowing his field of suspects. A short list of officers of a certain age, experience, rank. Mm. He did well, considering he was so ill. Surprised, Carla. Was the offer of information from General Stevchek genuine? Good Lord, no. It was a fix from start to finish. Stevchek existed, of course. Still does. Very distinguished man. But he never offered anything to control or anybody else. Did you expect control to send Jim Prida? Well, obviously we needed to be certain control would rise to the bait. We had to spell it out that he'd got to send a big gun to make the story stick. And we knew he'd only settle for someone outside London Station. Someone he trusted. And someone who spoke Czech, of course. Naturally. It had to be a man who was old circus, to bring the temple down a bit. Yes, I see the logic of that. Oh, hell. It was, perhaps, the most famous partnership the circus ever had. You and Jim, back in the old days. The iron fist in the iron glove. Who was it who coined that? I got him home, didn't I? Yes. That was good of you. The thing with Anne was Carla's idea. Was it? Yes. Did you think it was hers? The point was, Carla always thought if there was a threat, it would come from you. He said you were quite good. But that you had this one weak spot, Anne. It was a double fix, actually. On the one hand, you weren't likely to think of me as a circus spy if you were preoccupied with what your wife and I got up to in bed. And on the other, if it was well known around the place that I was her lover, was bound to look like personal vengeance if you ever did suggest I might be the mole. So Carla said not to strain it, but if possible, join the queue. Point? Point. Presumably it was on Carla's instructions. You were with Anne on the night of the Predo shoot-up as insurance. Oh, yes, he was adamant on that. <sighs> they tell me I could be away tomorrow, or the day after at the latest. Can you make sure any mail gets forwarded from my club? Oh, and the balance of my salary, of course. I will. Anything else? Oh, yes. Nearly forgot. You got a pen somewhere?
Thanks. Girlfriend. Give her this. I'm away on work of national importance. Maybe for years. So she can forget me. And I can't take her with me, can I? Even if I could, she'd be a bloody millstone. Oh, and, um... There's one particular boy. A cherub, but no angel. I haven't seen a lot of him. You better give him a couple of hundred. Can you do that out of the reptile fund? I would think so. Good. Oh, God, I'm tired. My pen, please. What? Oh. <laughs> Certainly. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> 